to talk to you, though, about another power today. I want to talk to you about a power that is way more important than electricity. A power that will do far more for you than electrical power or battery power will ever do. And I want to talk to you today about the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, and if you haven't heard of that, I want to tell you, I want to tell you about it today. But the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of the title of this sermon today is Power to Witness. So look with me in Luke chapter 24 and verse number 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The scripture of the Lord was saying here, hey, I'm going to send the promise of my father. Jesus was telling his disciples, I'm going to leave here. I'm going to die on an old rugged cross. I'm going to rise again on the third day. And a few days later, I'm going to ascend into heaven. But he said, I want you to tarry in Jerusalem. In other words, in that prayer room that they were in, that place that they prayed together until ye be endued with power from on high. Now listen to me. They say some 500 or more gathered for that prayer meeting. Only 120 finished it. But I'll tell you what, it was worth finishing because the Holy Spirit came down. In Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8, a very familiar scripture. But ye shall receive power. When? When when will I receive power? After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So until the Holy Ghost comes upon them, they did not have that power. But after that, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be what? Witnesses. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. So we see here some scriptures that Jesus prophesied or said that is going to come to pass. And in Acts chapter 2, verse number 1, the Bible says, And when the day of Pentecost, Jeff was talking about it early, earlier, was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Folks, this was a very real experience. They had prayed in the upper room and just as the Lord had said, Pentecost came. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came and set upon each of them, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Remember, this is an impartation of power upon them. I want to tell you, if we are going to do what we need to do for Jesus in these last days, we are going to have to have an impartation of power, of Holy Spirit power in our life. We need it as the church, amen. We need it to fulfill the great commission and to win people to the Lord. When we're talking about that, I think of the scripture in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19, because here's what I believe. I believe that the Holy Ghost is for so many things in our life. He's our comforter. He's our teacher. He's our guide. He's the one that draws us to Jesus and convicts us of our sins. But, but most importantly, he is here to give us power to be witnesses for him. Come on. I feel that power when I talk to somebody about the Lord, that power of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of me. Now the scripture says in Matthew 4, 19, he gives us power to witness, but Jesus told his disciples, follow me and I will do what? I will make you fishers of men. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Now, he was going to disciple them. He was going to train them. He was going to teach them. He said, hey, guys, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. But a little later, he said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high so that you can be witnesses. 
May I tell you today that it is the Lord's desire. Come on now. Nobody's exempt from what, what I'm about to say. It is the Lord's desire for every one of us to be powerful witnesses for Christ. Spirit filled witnesses. Spirit filled witnesses are effective witnesses for the Lord. I believe that. He commissioned us. He said in Matthew 28, 19, and 20, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we have a, Brother John, we have a commission, don't we? We have a commission to win people to the Lord. And, and involved in that commission is for us to be spirit-filled so that we will be more impactful, greater witnesses of the Lord, that we can effectively win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you something. There is an urgency to win souls right now. There is an urgency to win souls right now. If your family's not saved, you need to begin praying for their salvation. If they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, don't write them off and go, oh, they're just too much of a sinner. They'll never come to God. Don't ignore that. Let me tell you, you need to begin to put their name down somewhere where you will recall it and pray for it. In fact, I'll let you do something in church while I preach. Get your notepad out, get your phone out, and I want you to begin to make a list of people you know that need the Lord that you will start praying for. Now, if you're not going to start praying for them, don't even waste time and write their name down. But you start praying that God will save their soul. Listen, it may not be you that wins them to the Lord, but it might be your prayer that sends somebody else by. It might be your prayer that softens up their heart, that they're ready to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I want you to begin to make a list of some people that you will earnestly pray for. Let me ask you a question. How many of you know somebody that you want to go to hell? Nobody raise your hand. Thank God. Because if you'd have raised your hand, you and that person have a real problem, and you might need to come to the altar afterward. But we don't want anybody to go to hell. And we sure don't want people we love and care for, people we work with, people we go to school with, with people that we rub shoulders with. We don't want people to go to hell. It, we have to realize there is an urgency to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in fact, the Lord Jesus was talking to the disciples and he was describing to them the urgency in John chapter 4 and verse number 34. It says, Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Jesus came for a reason. Come on. He came for a reason, and that was to do the will of his Father. That it sent him here and to do his work. How many are to finish his work? How many would say that Jesus finished the work? He came to do exactly what the plan was. The scripture says, Jesus says, Say not ye, ask a question. There are yet four months, and then come his harvest. In other words, during that time, harvest was four months away. But Jesus says, say not ye there are four months and then cometh harvest. But he said, behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Friend, it's not four months to harvest. It's not a year to harvest. It's not two years to harvest. Harvest is right now in the United States of America. Harvest is right now in this community that we live in. I'm believing through some of the situations that we have been through over the last several months that God is bringing people's hearts home. Can you say amen? And that people will find Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Hear me, there is nothing more important in this world than you having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. There is nothing more important in this world than you having your kids hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, I love baseball, but that's not more important. I love football, but that's not more important. Soccer and volleyball and anything else you want to throw in there. Nothing is more important for your kids than being in church and having a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Now, some of you are going, I'm glad I showed up this morning since he said that. Listen, you need to live in front of your kids. Jesus is number one. And living for him and serving him is the absolute most important thing. I love to look out this morning and see families together. Amen. One more, Marcus, and y'all going to need another pew. Amen. And there is more than that. Uh, one of them's in the military and one of them's off of college or just graduated. But there's more than that. Amen. I look at the summers. One more, you're in trouble. Amen. Two more. Hallelujah. And some of you others that have, that have a lot of children. But it's good to see your kids on the pew with you. It's good to see your kids in the house of the Lord. I am so thankful for the the heritage that my mother gave me and raised me in God's house. You know what? I grew up in love with the house of the Lord. Come on now. That didn't make me weird. That didn't make me crazy. No, I grew up loving the things of God. Was I always a perfect kid? I'll just let y'all answer that few of you sit in this audience spanked me when I was coming up. Amen. And man, I prayed horrible things upon your life. I just want to let you know that. I don't know if they happened yet. But I wasn't a perfect kid. I wasn't a perfect teenager. I wasn't a perfect young adult. But let me tell you, I was raised fearing God, loving God, and I came back to God. Praise God. And I'm, I'm glad to be here today. So Jesus said, hey guys, harvest is not later Harvest is right now. Church harvest is not later. It's right now. We have a job to do. We have a work to get involved in. We have a commission from Jesus Christ upon our life to go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in to win people to the Lord. You say, Pastor, what is the most important thing that we should be doing right now? It's winning people to Jesus. It's talking about the Lord. There's no other thing I could say today. We have got to win people. And we've got to get serious about it. Most of us are somewhat driven, and we get when we get serious about something, we normally do it. Now, we may, we may goof off, we may procrastinate, but when we finally get serious about it, we grab the bull by the horns and we do it. Let me tell you, church, we need to rise up, and we need to be witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us his power, his Holy Ghost, to help us with this mission, and it is urgent. Within the last few seconds of my preaching, people died and went to hell. Listen to that. Probably hundreds across the world, in the last few seconds of my preaching, died and went to hell. Let me tell you, we need to be serious. We need to be Concerned. Do not get content that I'm saved and I look on the row and my family's saved and my brothers and sisters are saved. Let me tell you, you got to broaden your you got to broaden your harvest field, amen. And you've got to reach out and win people to the Lord. I did Sister Kathy uh, brother's funeral, uh, not your funeral, amen. You're still here. It's been a miracle, folks. She's back, amen. Her brother's funeral. Uh, this last week, and she had the privilege within the last two months of his life to lead him to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, it's never too late. Never too late. Made that service way easier to preach when you have somebody that's going to be in heaven one day. And so we have to realize that we have to, to get passionate about winning people to the Lord. You know, folks, we need to get tired of looking, and, and I'm looking from here, and Brother Stephen is looking from here, uh, but we need, we need to get tired of looking out and seeing green instead of Come on now. Talking about the color of the pews. Green instead of people. We need to fill up this place for Jesus Christ. Not just this service. Let's do another one. Amen. Not just another one. Let's fill up the Hispanic church. Amen. There are people all around us that are not attending the house of God, that are not serving God, that are not living for God, and they need the Lord. Sister Ruby, we watch that line go through food pantry every week. 
Over the last several weeks, I've had the privilege of standing in the parking lot and asking each one of their, their name and writing it down and communicating and talking to them. But every person that pulls through, many of them may know the Lord, but many do not. It's the opportunity for us to win them to the Lord Jesus Christ, for us to be Jesus in skin. Let me tell you, we need to do that all the time. So Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You know, Jesus was a great example about witnessing. It didn't matter who it was. Jesus was about letting people discover him and have a relationship with him. So he told those disciples, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He went to the house of Zacchaeus, a tax collector. How many of you want to go home with a tax collector this afternoon? Unless you can find some advantage in it, maybe they can work some things out and help you get some money back. Now, if you're a tax collector this morning, I know we may have some people that work for the IRS. We love you. You're saved. Amen. You're okay. But let me tell you, in Jesus' days, tax collectors were very crooked. And tax collectors charged on the side and made extra money. And, and so they were not a very liked individual in that society. But Jesus went home to Zacchaeus' house. Come on now. And, and you know what? People grumbled and complained about it. But I'm telling you what, it's time that we go home to Zacchaeus' house. With the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside of us, Amen. And as we go home to Zacchaeus' house, I believe through the power of the Holy Ghost, he will give us the anointing to witness and to speak Jesus and to change lives. Hallelujah. Nicodemus came to him by night. And many believed as he performed miracles in their midst. I think about the, uh, another case in the Bible where the Bible says that he must needs go through Samaria. And he encountered a, a woman at the well, a Samaritan woman. And Samaritans and Jews didn't really uh, get along very well. But he encountered her. And what did he do? He witnessed to her at that well. And it changed her life. And not only her life, but the lives of many others that she witnessed to. Come on now. Let's win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for a great Sunday school teacher, Dwight L. Moody would, may have never been a Christian, but because his Sunday school teacher went after him and led him to the Lord Jesus Christ, he was one of the greatest preachers that ever lived upon the face of this earth, praise God. I want to tell you today, let's witness. We got the power to do it. Let's witness for the Lord. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So if we're really following, how many of you call yourself a follower of Jesus? Raise your hand. Rest of you, we'll have altar service for you right afterwards. But a follower of Jesus, I believe I'm talking to everybody here this morning. If you're a follower, you will be a fisher. If you're a follower, you will be a soul winner. You will look for the opportunity to win souls. I believe that when we're soul winning, one of the things that's really important to do is to be led by the Holy Spirit that's on the inside of you. I have found out, I have had the Holy Spirit shut my mouth up when I shouldn't talk. And I've had him compel me to speak when I should speak. Come on, that's the way that it works. And that's the way that we win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, I, I, you know, I don't want to lead nobody to the, the Lord in a grocery store. Let me tell you, if the Holy Spirit compels you at that moment, you do it because it's the right moment. Hear what I'm saying. You may be sitting in a doctor's office and say, this is just not the right place to do it. And your flesh may say that. But if the Holy Spirit speaks it to you, do it because he has worked out the timing. Come on now. For that soul to be one to the Lord. The Bible talks about the fact that some plant and some water, but God brings the increase. You may be a planter. You may be a water. It doesn't really matter. But amen, let's just believe that God is going to bring souls into his kingdom. So we are to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He said that the comforter is coming and he will give you power to be witnesses. He will give us power to be witnesses. 
the Christians from Acts 2, 4 on were full of the Holy Ghost and they went everywhere preaching the word of God. Listen, if you don't think this is effective, if you'll read a few more scriptures down in that particular chapter, after the Holy Spirit fell upon them and they began to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ with the power of the Holy Ghost, over 3,000 were added that day to the church. So the power of the Holy Spirit involved in our witness is not just important, but it's a necessity. And we need to be full of that Holy Spirit in order for that to happen so that we can uh, witness for the Lord and be effective in that. Now, I want to give you just a couple of things real quick that I want you to think about, and then I'll close out. One of the things that I want you to begin to do is I want you to begin to pray, Lord, give me a real burden for souls. Maybe that list that you started. I want you to pray, God, give me a burden for that soul. Now listen, a burden described as literally a load, typically a heavy one. So what you're doing here is you're not just writing down a name and forgetting about it until the next time you open your Bible or you open up your notepad and your phone to that. No, you're writing down a name that you literally want God to put on you as a heavy load or as a burden for them to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I have a, a very real question to ask this morning. I don't want anybody to answer it because this is personal. But how many of you are really burdened for a person right now? I'm talking about loaded down. You can feel the weight upon you because they are lost and they are not serving God. You know, it could be a, a kid. We can get burdened for our children real quick. It could be a grandchild. We can do the same. It could be a brother or sister. But what about being burdened for somebody that's not related to you? What about being burdened for our community as a whole that needs the Lord? What about being burdened for those that are, that are hooked on alcohol or hooked on drugs or other addictions in this life? God, lay some soul upon my heart and love that soul through me. Come on, now that's what that old song says. And we need to pray, God, give me a burden for lost people. You see, I'm full of the Holy Spirit. I have him in my life and he makes me a witness. So let's do something with the power that we have. In fact, I believe if you truly have that power in your life, you'll want to be a witness and you will be a witness and you will talk to people about the Lord. I challenge you church to look for the opportunity to win people to Jesus Christ. You see, we have power to witness. We're not going out there without a backing. We're not going out there without the needed strength that we're going to need. We're not going out there without authority because we have the Holy Spirit and the Word of God on the inside of us. We just need to go out and fulfill the commission that Jesus put upon our life. People are on their way to hell. Now that has to sink in. It has to become a sobering thought. People are on their way to a devil's hell. Friend, does that concern you? It concerns me. Does that break your heart? It does mine. Does it compel you to get up and go after those that need Jesus Christ as their personal savior, if it doesn't do any of that, then you need to check your heart. You need to check your life because when the Holy Spirit was in, when the early church was empowered by the Holy Spirit, they got up and won souls to the kingdom of God. And that's what I want us to do. That's what I want to do. I want to win people to the Lord. A few years ago, I met a man on the streets in New York City that I didn't know. He was homeless. It was cold. Amen. I offered to buy him a cup of hot chocolate, and we went down and sat in a restaurant, and there were people looking at us strangely. But you know what? I had ulterior motives. I'm sorry. And that ulterior motives was being led by the Holy Spirit 
who had me look on him, and my heart was drawn to him. I don't necessarily, it's been several years ago, I don't necessarily remember his name. That was not important. God knows his name. But I prayed the sinner's prayer with him right in that restaurant. I don't know if that man's still on this earth. I don't know if he is in heaven. I don't know how his life has changed or turned around. But I know that night in New York City, God had me fastened on him. What, ha- what was it? It was the Holy Ghost drawing me to him, to witness to him. Now, I don't tell you that story to pat me on the shoulder because it can happen to all of us. But I'm saying that's the way the church needs to be. We need to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is speaking and leading into our hearts. God, fill the kingdom is my prayer. God, empty hell and fill heaven is my prayer. And church, we need to get busy. We we don't have, I believe, much time left. I believe the coming of the Lord is is happening soon. I'm looking forward to it, but even if he tarries his coming, I want to be on fire winning people to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost fell, and great things happened. Man, what a church service. Man, they've been praying for days. Come on, they've been praying for 40 days. What a church service. And the Holy Ghost fell upon them. And they began to all speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they received the power to be the witnesses that Jesus said they were going to need. Let's make up our minds that we are going to receive that power. And that we are going to use that power to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor Hunt, I gave my heart to the Lord, but I haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to begin to ask God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. You say, Pastor, I, have, I didn't even know anything about it. I'm telling you, it is an impartation of power mentioned in the Word of God. Uh, impartation of power that we can be witnesses and effective witnesses the way that we need to be. Amen? Amen. I want you to stand with me across this building today. God, help us in this house. God, I said at the beginning of this sermon, we live in the greatest hour with electricity, with able to have things powered in our homes and in our life, but Truly, we live in the greatest hour because of the presence of your Holy Ghost. And Father, I believe that it is the power of the Holy Ghost that empowers and propels the church forward. God, here's what I learned in the last three months. I already knew it, but it was reconfirmed. Nothing can stop the church. COVID-19 epidemic cannot stop the church. Hopefully we never have a COVID-20 in our lifetime, but it won't stop the church. You know what? The church just got put right out of their four walls. Every church in America got thrown onto the internet and every other social media platform that was available. Nothing can stop the church because you can't stop the church full of the Holy Ghost. You can't stop the church that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And every Christian that is empowered by the Holy Ghost cannot be stopped to be a witness for the kingdom of God.